Have you ever found yourself pondering about what antimatter is and why it's so crucial? We're about to embark on a journey, exploring the elusive world of antimatter. This seemingly science fiction substance is not only real, but holds immense importance in our universe. Its mysterious nature and potential role in the future of energy generation will leave you astounded. So gear up for an exciting adventure into the world of antimatter. Stay tuned to unravel the mysteries of antimatter and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to never miss an upcoming video. So what is this elusive antimatter we're talking about? Let's dive in and simplify this somewhat complex concept. Imagine a world where everything is a mirror image of what we're used to. It's the same world, but all the particles in it are opposite. This is, in a nutshell, the world of antimatter. Intriguing, isn't it? Antimatter is like the doppelganger of matter. It's made up of antiparticles, which are essentially the twins of the particles that make up matter. But there's a twist. While they might look identical, these twins are polar opposites when it comes to charge. Consider an electron, a negatively charged particle. Its antiparticle is the positron, which is identical in size and mass, but carries a positive charge. This is the fundamental characteristic of antimatter. It's the same, but opposite. Let's think about it in terms of a game of chess. You've got two sets of pieces, one black and one white. They're mirror images of each other, and each piece on one side has a corresponding piece on the other. The king, queen, rooks, knights, bishops, and pawns on the white side are all mirrored by their counterparts on the black side. That's a lot like how particles and antiparticles pair up. Now it's important to remember that antimatter isn't some evil or dangerous twin of matter. It's just different. And that difference is what makes it fascinating. It's like looking at the universe through a mirror, where everything is familiar, yet subtly different. Even though antimatter sounds like something out of a science fiction novel, it's very real. Scientists have even managed to create small amounts of it in laboratory conditions. But don't worry, we're not about to be overrun by an antimatter apocalypse. It's incredibly difficult to produce and even harder to store. In essence, antimatter is like the mirror image of matter in the universe. It's a reflection of our world, but with an opposite charge, and this dichotomy is what makes the study of antimatter so compelling. It's a peek into the looking glass, a glimpse at the other side of reality as we know it. Now you may be wondering where does this antimatter come from? Well, antimatter isn't just a figment of science fiction. It's very real, and it's created in high-energy environments. Imagine particle accelerators, those gigantic machines that slam particles together at nearly the speed of light. In these intense collisions, energy transforms into mass, according to Einstein's famous equation, EMC squared. This results in pairs of particles and antiparticles springing into existence. But particle accelerators aren't the only places where antimatter can be found. Some types of radioactive decay also produce antimatter. For instance, certain isotopes, when they decay, emit positrons, which are the antimatter counterparts of electrons. Even in the vast cosmos, high-energy phenomena like supernovae, or the collisions of neutron stars, are believed to produce antimatter. So, the creation of antimatter, as you can see, is not an exotic, far-flung concept. So, even though it's rare, antimatter is indeed formed right here on Earth and in the cosmos. What happens when matter and antimatter collide? Picture two superheroes, each with immense power, but opposites in every way. When they meet, it's not a handshake or a friendly chat, it's a full-blown battle. That's how you can envision the clash between matter and antimatter. When a particle of matter meets its antimatter counterpart, they annihilate each other. Yes, you heard it right, they completely destroy each other. But this isn't a quiet, peaceful exit. It's an explosive release of energy. This is where Einstein's famous equation, E... The equation E is equal mc squared is equal to mass, or m, times the speed of light c squared. This means that even a tiny amount of mass can be converted into a huge amount of energy. So, when matter and antimatter annihilate each other, their mass isn't lost. Instead, it's converted into energy. And we're not talking about a little bit of energy. We're talking about an enormous amount. For example, 
If a paperclip made of antimatter were to collide with a paperclip made of regular matter, the energy released would be equivalent to the explosion of 2,000 tons of TNT. But don't get any ideas about antimatter bombs. Containing antimatter is one of the biggest challenges in physics. It's so reactive that it will annihilate with any matter it comes into contact with, making it incredibly difficult to store. So, while the collision of matter and antimatter sounds like something out of a science fiction movie, it's a very real phenomenon. It's just that these encounters are incredibly rare because there's so much more matter than antimatter in the universe, but don't be disheartened. The rarity of these events doesn't diminish their significance. In fact, it's this very rarity that makes the study of antimatter so intriguing and important. So, a collision of matter and antimatter leads to an explosive release of energy. This energy, if harnessed, could power cities, propel spacecrafts, and open up new frontiers in our understanding of the universe. With such an energetic reaction, you might be thinking, can we use antimatter? And in fact, there are several potential applications for antimatter that could revolutionize various fields. One of the most promising areas is in medical imaging. Positron emission tomography, or PET scans, already use antimatter in the form of positrons, which are the antimatter counterparts to electrons. When a positron collides with an electron in the body, they annihilate each other, producing gamma rays that can be detected and used to construct a detailed image of the body's internal structures. This technology is invaluable in diagnosing and monitoring conditions like cancer. But perhaps the most exciting potential use for antimatter lies in space travel. Antimatter is the most energy-dense material in the universe. Just one gram of antimatter contains the energy equivalent of about 25 million gallons of rocket fuel. This makes it incredibly efficient for propulsion. In theory, an antimatter rocket could get us to Mars in just six weeks, compared to the six to nine months it currently takes using conventional rockets. However, harnessing the power of antimatter is not without its challenges. For starters, antimatter is extremely difficult to produce. Right now, we can only create it in tiny quantities using particle accelerators, and this process is very energy intensive. Then there's the problem of storage. Because antimatter annihilates when it comes into contact with regular matter, we need to devise a way to store it without it touching anything else, which is easier said than done. Despite these challenges, the potential benefits of antimatter make it a tantalizing field of study. Scientists around the world are working tirelessly to unlock the secrets of antimatter and find ways to overcome these hurdles. If successful, we could see a new era of space exploration, more precise medical imaging, and potentially even a new source of clean, limitless energy. Harnessing the power of antimatter could revolutionize our future if we can overcome the hurdles. But here's a puzzle. Why is there less antimatter than matter in the universe? This is the antimatter asymmetry problem, one of the biggest unsolved mysteries in physics. It's like a cosmic game of hide and seek we've been playing since the inception of modern science. The theory of the Big Bang suggests that during the birth of the universe, equal amounts of matter and antimatter should have been created. But if that were the case, they should have annihilated each other, leaving no matter behind for stars, galaxies, or us. Yet, here we are, in a universe abundant with matter, but scarce in antimatter. So, how did matter win the cosmic battle? Several theories try to answer this conundrum. One popular theory suggests that there might be minute differences in the properties of matter and antimatter. These differences, although seemingly insignificant, could have tipped the balance in favor of matter during the early universe. Another theory points towards the existence of undiscovered particles. These hypothetical particles could have interfered with the annihilation process, leading to an excess of matter. While these theories are fascinating, they remain just that, theories. As of now, the antimatter asymmetry problem is still a mystery waiting to be solved. This imbalance between matter and antimatter is not just a scientific curiosity, it's a fundamental question about our very existence. The answer to this mystery could reshape our understanding of the universe, and perhaps even reveal new laws of physics. 
Imagine a future where we might harness antimatter as an energy source or use it to propel spacecraft to distant galaxies. The possibilities are as vast as the universe itself, but to reach there we must first solve the antimatter mystery. The antimatter mystery remains and its solution could change our understanding of the universe. So continue to question, continue to wonder, because one day we might just find the answer. Till next time, keep wondering and exploring the universe. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more intriguing content. And if there's any topic that piques your curiosity, drop a comment below.